integrating Mac OS with open source. That sounds kind of interesting. Let's 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 see what we're talking about here. So if you know that I'm a kind of platform agnostic person, um, I use as many technologies as I can. And I've talked about it in past, but I think we can do just a vlog just about why I use the mix of these technologies in future. Uh, you may not know that, you know, I run OpenSUSE on my main system. But uh, whenever I travel, I always bring my uh, MacBook with me. And it runs on Mac OS. Once again, uh, we can talk about it why, but that's not the topic for today. Um, I recently upgraded my MacBook to uh, High Sierra. Uh, while there is a kind of very smooth upgrade path, I kind of uh, went for a fresh uh, reinstall. Uh, the reason is that, you know, as a, as a Linux user, I kind of love formatting hard drives and installing <laughs> new operating systems on it. Uh, but that was not the reason. The reason was that uh, Apple came out with a new file system, which is being used as the defile file system on macOS which is replacing HFS plus. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, there is no rough edges and that um, there won't be any problem whatsoever. So I went for, you know, I formatted the hard drive and reinstalled the operating system. I have been kind of upgrading it, you know, from one point release to other point release so far. So I had actually never been through this situation before. Uh, this happened just recently. So it was fresh in my eyes in my mind. So I wanted to talk to you about that. Once I finished uh, reinstalling Mac OS, not reinstalling, but fresh installing, I suddenly found that, oh, I have to install a lot of applications there. And, and that's when it hit me that even if I am using Mac OS, uh, a majority of applications that I run even on my MacBook are open source applications. And that proves my point that uh, don't use something just because it's open source. Use it because that's the best tool in your toolbox, or that's the best weapon in your arsenal. The weapon is not a right analogy in this word. But my point is that use the best tools. And what I find is that in 75% cases, those tools are open source applications or open source software. And that's amazing. I mean, as I talked about it in the previous video that uh, choose the right tools uh, and I tend to look at the open source alternatives before using a proprietary version of uh, alternative and I try to compare which one has uh, better features for my need and then I choose that one and as it, on my Mac OS I kind of find that you know almost everything is open source so Mac OS itself is open source. Uh, Apple releases a lot of code. Uh, it's a totally different world that, you know, it's a totally different kind of situation where, you know, it's, it's not open, open, but uh, it is, you know, kind of a lot of open sources there underneath. But that is not the point. I am talking about the application layer as well. So once I finished installing it, and the first thing that I did was browser. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Safari, um, even if it is based on open source code base, Apple released the source code, and I think KDE community also uses and works with the same KHTML code base. I, I don't like that browser, so I prefer uh, Safari and Firefox, uh, sorry, uh, Chrome and Firefox, apology for that. Uh, so the first thing I do is I go ahead and download uh, Chrome and Firefox and install on my system. The problem is that by default, Mac chooses, you know, Safari as the default browser. So you have to go to system preferences and then there you will see Safari selected as the default browser. Just change it to Chrome and you are done. Uh, then comes multimedia playback. Even if I don't watch anything on my laptop, I work on these kind of videos so I edit a lot of work and I need to be able to watch them I need to be able to watch my footage and QuickTime is the worst software out there uh, as much as I love Apple hardware I despise their software none of their stock software is good 
uh, and QuickTime is no exception. Uh, interestingly, QuickTime cannot run 99.9% .9 of video file formats out there, including the files that I create on the same Mac OS using uh, Adobe Premiere. So uh, what I do, I have to find a solution. And the solution is open source. I hope you guessed it. Yes, it's, it's VLC. It's a fully open source uh, m you know, multimedia player out there, uh, which can play virtually every file format out, out there, no matter what it is, you throw at VLC and it will play it. And it comes with a lot of additional features in addition to that. You can use it to convert file from one format to another. Though today's word, you don't need to do that because uh, I remember earlier when I had to put something on my smartphone, I had to convert it from one format to other, but not you don't have to. I mean, I think I also had to compress the file size because uh, the storage on the devices were smaller. Now my, uh, you know, my, my Samsung Note has 256 gig. My iPad or an iPhone, they have 128 gig. So I don't need to compress anything, but you can use it if you do need to change the file format of a file you can watch streaming videos you can extract audio from uh, videos which i do most of the time when i do interviews and i have to just take the audio out for podcast or i have to take the audio uh, to give it to somebody for transcription i use vlc to do that i also use handbrake but i prefer vlc because it is uh, it uh, it can do a lot of things and i actually don't need the transcoding feature anymore so vlc is great and one more thing that i just found about VLC is that there's a beta version which can also play 360 videos uh, because macOS doesn't support 360 videos out of the box. I mean, you cannot even expect anything to play on QuickTime, so forget about 360 video. Uh, so now, whatever video I shoot from my Samsung 360 gear, I can very easily watch them on my MacBook. So that's, you know, which is something I need when I'm traveling and I've taken some videos and I want to watch them. So I use VLC to do that. Uh, then comes word processing as a writer, though I do most of my work in a plain text editor, but I also need a full-fledged word processor for a lot of things. Um, while Pages is now free, Pages is the, uh, the default word processor of Apple, which you can install from App Store, but I will not recommend it. Uh, I actually bought it initially when you know I wanted to play with everything that Apple has to offer. And one big problem with Pages is that it does not use a standard file format to store your files. And it could be tied to that version of Pages. Um, I had heard a lot of stories that when Apple upgraded Pages to a newer version, people who have created files with the previous version of Pages were not able to open those files. Imagine me as a writer, I have been working on my novel for a couple of years now. Imagine all the work that I had done in the last five years was gone because I saved everything in pages and now I cannot open it. And Apple said, you know, go and install the previous version of pages, open the file again and then export or, you know, upgrade it to the new version. And the previous version of pages is not even available there. So you cannot install it on the new version of Mac. So it's like a vicious cycle. So my advice to you is please don't use pages. And even if somebody is holding a gun to your head and you have to use pages, don't save any file in pages defiled file format. Always export it to docx or something else. Never, never, never. I repeat one more time, never use pages. Head over to LibreOffice site and download LibreOffice, which is once again fully open source word processor, which is actually giving very tough competition to Microsoft Word. Uh, it has all the features that you would expect from any word processor and it's free of cost and it's open source and it works great. It has a full suite. So just, just give it a try. And uh, there's one thing that I really, really, really don't like and that is uh, email client. Uh, as a writer, uh, Email is something that is very, very critical to me. Um, uh, all of my communication happens over email. Then I rely heavily on calendars for my appointments and interviews. Then I take a lot of notes that I sync across. And then the fourth thing is uh, context because you know once 
I, I have an email. I want it in my database. Unfortunately, Thunderbird that used to be a great solution on Linux is not the same Thunderbird anymore. Mozilla dropped support of Thunderbird. Now it's being maintained by community and I have heard that Mozilla is once again taking over development. But in either, either case, it's uh, it's not the same Thunderbird that it used to be. You can use a couple of plugins with it to get calendar and everything work. But since uh, most of my work happens in different time zones, like for example, I'm going to DockerCon, which is in Europe. So if I set up calendar, uh, sorry, interviews here, the timeline, time zone will be all messed up. So if the interview is going to be at 7, not 7, but like 1 p.m. in Denmark time, and I set it here, it may not even sync with the time zone. So it will all be screwed up. So that is a weak point. So I kind of use mails uh, because unfortunately there is no good open source email solutions for um, Mac OS. So please, if you are working on some email solution and if you're an open source community, please do something. Um, there's one more application that I you may or may not use. Uh, it's VirtualBox uh, because I keep an eye on all these multiple platforms, Windows and Linux, and I hate dual booting. I don't want to stop doing what I'm doing to be able to log into another uh, operating system and lose like 20 minutes in the process. So I use a lot of virtual machines uh, and uh, that also allows me to work on OpenSUSE, Ubuntu. So whenever a new release is out, I can immediately test it without breaking my workflow and write about it. Uh, I use uh, um, Oracle VirtualBox, which is a great virtual uh, machine manager. You can download it, it's free of course, it's open source and it's very easy to use. So if you are somebody who wants to kind of uh, rely on some Linux application or some Microsoft Windows application and uh, you don't want to dual boot because you have system resource uh, issues or you really don't want to mess with that. So VirtualBox is a very good solution where you can run you know, multiple distributions or operating systems uh, within Mac OS at the same time. Uh, so that's another you know, neat thing that you can do uh, and it's open source. Now, um, I really don't listen to music on my laptop. I mostly use Google Home, Android Shield TV, or my phone and tablet to listen to music. But if you're somebody who listens to music on your laptop, then, ah, once again, iTunes is not the right tool. It's very bloated. I suggest Clementine. It's a fully open source solution, and it has some neat features like, you know, lyrics. So you can see the lyrics of the songs that are playing. So try it out too. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, I do a lot of you know audio editing work as well. Uh, but once again, it could be a niche for you. But if you create podcast or if you do any kind of audio editing work, I would heavily recommend Audacity. It's a great tool. It's fully open source and it works awesome. I mean, it's kind of iconic in its own domain. I recently upgraded to Adobe as a full suite. Uh, so I'm also kind of trying with Audition as well, but Audacity is still my favorite uh, kind of uh, solution to record audio tracks or to work on them. Uh, uh, we have already talked about email and um, what else do I use? Mm. I, I think that's more or less like what, yeah, uh, I almost forgot about it, and that's what I was thinking about it. Uh, before, as I said, before I switched to fully, you know, Adobe Suite, uh, GIMP and Krita. They are, you know, two amazing open source uh, image manipulation or uh, sketching tools. Uh, GIMP has only one problem, which I recall was that it was not scaling on my Retina display, so I moved to Krita. So if you are doing some image processing, image editing work, then you should try Krita and GIMP there. Uh, if you want to manage your photographs that you take with your camera, then I would suggest Digicam or Darktable. Once again, they are both open source applications and uh, give them a try. My only problem is that I kind of, ever since I just bought Adobe Suite, I'm kind of living too much in that world because everything is integrated so well with each other. But before that, I was fully on GIMP, Krita, Darktable, and Digicam. So you should try those uh, applications as well. Now, uh, 
I think that's pretty much what I use on my MacBook. And now if you if you look at it, other than mail, I'm not using anything that is coming from Apple's barn. I mean, everything that I'm using is open source. Uh, one exception has been, you know, Adobe because, you know, I do need uh, high-end film editing software and kind of Linux is still weak there. But beyond that, you know, as I said, you know, more than 75% of my, my use case, my workload runs on open source solutions. So even if you are using Mac OS, you don't have to use proprietary technologies. You can invade your Mac OS with open source applications. You can, you know, kind of live in open source world, even if you're running Mac OS. So that was kind of, I, I think there may be one or two more applications that I use, but I cannot think of right now because they may be some corner cases, but this is pretty much what I use. And that's almost all of my workload there. So now you tell me that if you are a Mac OS user, what kind of open source applications are you using there? Uh, let's have that discussion in the comments below. And for the next video, the teaser is that uh, I'm a Linux user, so how do I use Mac OS? And let me tell you a secret. I use Mac OS just the way I use my Linux box. That's, that's true. Uh, I do everything that I do on my Linux box on Mac OS natively. How do I do that? That's the topic for the next video. So subscribe to this channel and see you next time. Bye for now.